Hello and welcome to Next Day Solar. In this video, we're going to show you how to add battery storage to an existing solar system. Now, there's quite a lot you can do in your life to try and become a bit more sustainable. Follow me. One of the first things you can do is add a water butt to your property, collect rainwater. When you're watering your plants, you're using water from nature rather than drawing it from your supply. Now, the other thing you can do is obviously use a bike instead of a car to get to work or run, things like that. Obviously, you can grow your own food as well. That reduces all the mileage from food to your property. Here, we're growing nice uh, tomatoes, very easy to do. You can also compost your food waste as well. Anything that's raw and organic, put back into the soil and use it to grow your own food next year. It's a great way of reducing the waste that goes into your rubbish bin. Well, as you saw back in 2021, we installed solar on this flat roof. And today we're gonna to show you how to install batteries to the same property. Slightly interesting install because we're retrofitting batteries, which is fine. There are lots of properties that had solar from 2010 onwards. And this is a great way of adding batteries, making your home smarter, more intelligent. And there's a good few reasons why. The first is that energy companies now are charging you a fraction of the price for energy between midnight and six o'clock in the morning. Now that means that we can charge those batteries through the night and use that energy through the day. We should save over 60% on the electrical energy bill of this property. The second reason is that this property has been using a hot water diverter to divert any electrical energy to heat. Now that's great, but heating water with electrical energy is not as efficient as other ways of heating water. So now we're going to charge the batteries with any excess energy that we have and use it when we need it most. The other good thing about battery storage is that by using energy at night and charging your batteries and giving it away in the day, you're reducing the requirement for the grid to make energy at peak time. So you're reducing your carbon impact. So those are a couple of reasons why we're doing batteries today. Hope you enjoy the install. If you're thinking of doing this yourself, follow the step by steps today. You should be in for a chance. Start of our installation and what we're doing is adding surge protection. The solar system is up in the loft and typically many customers like yourself might not have space to add batteries and inverter where their consumer board is. At the moment we've got one consumer board in the property and we need a second consumer board so that the supply upstairs is on its own consumer board and has its own RCD. This is a new uh, four-way metal consumer board which we're installing with a new RCD an appropriately rated MCV for the supply upstairs and a surge protection device. So we're adding this surge protection device uh, to avoid any tripping of the surface in the property, um, adding RCD protection as well because the cables are buried within the internal fabric of the house uh, and uh, then the supply is running up uh, to the loft which you'll see in a moment which is where the installation is going to take place. Did I get that right? Yeah, pretty much. <laughs> cool, all right. So what we're doing now is the property is slightly different because it has a changeover switch. So this is the feed from the mains into the changeover switch and then that goes out to the consumer board. Now we're adding a second consumer board so we're going to have a block here which is going to then supply this consumer board and a new consumer board. So that's what we're doing. This is the second stage of the installation and we're installing an energy meter. This energy meter is a networked energy meter. It's going to plug into the home's network system um, and that will supply data to the inverter of when to push energy or when to charge. So it's very, very important. Now, um, if you haven't got a data connection between uh, your uh, energy meter and the inverter, you are going to need something. There are various wireless alternatives out there, but we do prefer a fixed connection. So if you're doing building works, it's always good to run uh, data connections up into the loft because you never know when you might be thinking of installing solar. So we're fitting this now and we're going to carry on. While we're finishing uh, here, I just thought I'd explain one of the interesting developments that are coming. So companies like Octopus Energy, who are a UK power supplier, um, have launched something called Intelligent Octopus um, and Agile Octopus. And Agile Octopus allows you to effectively sell or buy energy every 30 minutes and the price is changing every 30 minutes. So the system that we're putting in today is future proof. Um, the Victron system is incredibly intelligent. The Dutch are very smart people and it will be able to link up uh, with Octopus Energy's pricing. They have an API, uh, a protocol online to check pricing and therefore the system will either be able to buy or sell energy. Um, we did meet someone last year uh, in Amsterdam that had effectively a negative energy bill. He'd actually been paid £89 for all the energy used in the year and through a system such as we're installing today that's exactly what one can achieve. So by effectively buying and selling um, much like in a market you are becoming a producer of energy, you're an energy storer as well. So it's a very, very interesting development and it's one of the things we'll show you in this video how you program that all up. The 
Okay, so right now we're downgrading the fuse, uh, the circuit protection device for the existing uh, AC solar. It was set up at 16, which is really too much for what it needs, considering it's max 1500 watts, six amps. And since we're adding in a new generator to the system, it was important to make sure that it would go and trip if, if it exceeded what it was meant to. The Victron has two uh, outputs, AC1, AC2, and this is the AC2 output, which will die um, if there's a power cut. And we're just gonna have it here as an additional circuit so that we can have internet and other things up here um, to, to provide uh, power for the loft. So just another additional thing that can run through the inverter as well. Okay, right, that's the AC in done for the Victron. That's the network cable, which is the only other one to do. Okay, so quick overview of where we are. So we've, we've made great progress. We're just finishing off to earth our battery. Those are the uh, Pilontech batteries that we've got here. They're five kilowatt each. Um, they have a max charge current of 80 amps at 48 volts. They're rated to 48 volts. They're one of the most cost-effective batteries on the market. Um, it's very easy to wire up. A link between the two, link between the two, and they have a communications cable. This is a specific Victron communications cable that's coming up to the Serbo GX, which you'll see in a second. Um, but yeah, it's 10 kilowatt together, and they work together as a team. Um, and then they've got their cable that comes supplied into a fuse, into an isolator, and into the inverter. So that's, that's a good choice, and Pilontech integrate nicely with Victron, so you can see the battery. It's on the screen. On, on. And you push and hold the first battery, one, two, three, and it will turn the second battery on, and this is going to fire up. Okay. Now, there is no grid, so the inverter, and the AC is off as well, which is fine. Great. Right, and it's inverting, which is great. So you can see we've got the overview of the system quickly here, and if I head to pages, we see our battery. Now we're not seeing our grid meter because it's not on yet and we need to get that on downstairs then we should see the grid meter up here and we know that we can accurately run the system perfectly. There is a God, there is a God. <laughs> All right, so we're at the end. We finished messing around in the utility cupboard. So just to briefly explain what we've got here, it's a bit more complex than most, but we've fitted an energy meter. You need an energy meter, and the energy meter comes after the supply into the house. And you need that in order to tell the inverter upstairs how much energy is being used by the house or how much energy is being pushed back by the solar, because we have AC PV here. Uh, that goes into our grid uh, backup changeover switch. So if we needed to, we can plug in a three pin plug and power the home. Uh, and that goes out then to a Henley block junction box which then provides for a new board because we fitted a new RCD uh, for the solar system itself. So that's everything we've done downstairs. Now we're going to show you on the computer the kind of data that we can see and how we can start to use this system uh, to really reduce uh, and minimize the home's usage of energy. So let's quickly have a look at the smart meter to start with. So just a quick overview here on the Victron screen. So you can see AC loads are six and a half, uh, 6, 000, over 6,000 watts. We're drawing three kilowatt from the grid, 3,000 watts. And that's because we've limited our inverter uh, to uh, 14 amps, which is about 3,700 watts. So you can see that the batteries are discharging, fans kicked on on the inverter, it's starting to work nice and hard. We're cooking dinner now, the kids are having their dinner. So you can see here that the system is working really, really hard. It's discharging the battery, which is fantastic. And you can see the battery lights are flashing as well. So that's really good. Now we are getting something from solar as well, and we're working hard to make sure that the solar edge inverter will be showing on here. But you can already see how the batteries are already compensating uh, for the home's consumption, which is what we're looking for here. We're looking to reduce our consumption from the grid at an expensive time like now and provide the energy from the home. Six kilowatts is a lot of energy, so there must be a lot of ovens and cookers and kettles going on downstairs. Okay, so here we have the overview of the Victron systems. Now you can see what we're drawing from the grid is 16 watts, which is obviously very little power. This will fluctuate as the system's trying to balance itself the whole time. Now it's showing the AC load of the house, 73 watts, and you can see the AC loads matching what the grid uh, has. And that's because the system is continually balancing. Now the battery is actually at a state of charge. So you can see we're putting 310 watts in. And the reason for that is that the property uh, is generating about 200 watts uh, from solar. If we quickly refresh that and give us an update on what we're generating. Okay, it's dropped now and the clouds come over. And what we should see is that that charging figure will come down uh, and then the battery is actually now in a state of idle. 
uh, and we should move actually to a state where it might even be discharging um, as the property um, starts to consume power and needs energy from the battery. Now if we want to take a look in a bit more detail, we've got this graph here which shows us um, the property's consumption uh, and statistics over the last seven days. So in the very beginning we were simply charging the battery at night and you can see we're drawing about 3,706 watts um, uh, through each evening you can see the times here and if I scroll down you can see that these peaks here correspond to when the battery was charged so we've got uh, time charging from midnight through to about four o'clock in the morning um, or when the battery is full so here you can see again as the state of charge uh, is climbing our peak grid usage now there's these two peaks here that's when the car charger was on so we're peaking at about 11,000 watts and that's because we're charging the battery and charging the vehicle car as well all of that off-peak rate um, if you come down a little bit further here, at uh, the very early days, the first evening, I set the current charge, max charge current to 60 amps, but then I actually flattened this off to 50 amps because I didn't need to charge the battery uh, that quickly and there's no need really to. So uh, 48 volt or 50 the volts at 50 amps is 2.5 uh, kilowatts an hour. I've got a 10 kilowatt battery, so I want to set it up to ensure that no matter if the battery was flat it would always charge fully and you can see here that about 4.20 in the morning the battery came to a fully state and that's from a dead state of about 10% um, in the evening. So that's the state of charge cycle and the uh, battery voltage. So you get lots of data with Victron, a bit about battery power, how much power and this is a game where it's being charged at two and a half kilowatts and then you've also got this solar irradiance forecast which Victron give you, which gives you an idea of the kind of solar energy you're going to get. And the blue line actually follows what it's going to give. And this is going to help people in the future um, with scheduled charging. If we have a look at the system here and we go into some of the uh, menus of the Victron device, if we go into the ESS, which is the energy storage system here, and we go into uh, scheduled charging down here, you can see it's inactive, but there are a number of said schedules that we can set up. I've set mine up to charge every day at midnight for four hours, and there will be more things in the future that will allow you to set when to charge or when to discharge. So I imagine very soon there will be a scheduled charge and scheduled discharge levels from Victron. So that just gives you a quick overview of the system. If you are looking to set up your Victron system, you'll be coming to this menu here, seeing your overview of the system. Uh, and then going in and seeing the various elements. We've got that Carlo Gravatti energy meter, the battery sat there, um, along with every other setup that you need. So I hope you find that interesting. Well, I think this is a great solution for customers that already have solar installed that don't have a battery. Now, one of the options could be to upgrade to a hybrid inverter, um, but uh, that requires changing things. And you might have microinverters. So in this scenario here with the solar edge, it has microinverters on the roof, so it requires scaffolding. So this is quite a good solution if you don't want to start interfering with the existing solar panels or inverter that you might have. And it might be an AC inverter, so a high performance inverter, and adding a DC side to the system is an easy way uh, to bolt on. So that's why um, we've opted for this scenario. And like I said, Pilontech, great value battery, Victron, fantastic inverter with future-proof connectivity and functionality for the future. We hope you enjoyed this installation. It's been quite a challenging one, quite an interesting one, and we'll see you on the next one. Thank you for watching.